Gossip, judgment, and offense can destroy a church community. The pain turns many away from God, but He never turns away from us. I'm Holly Wagner, and today on Better Together, I'm joining Lori, Jackie Hill Perry, Nona Jones, and Diana Nepstead for a powerful conversation on how to heal and grow healthy connections in the body of Christ. I think to talk about the beauty of church, it, you kind of have to be fair in addressing some of the difficult parts of church. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, uh, I went to a church at one point in my Christian walk that I thought was great and wonderful. They were teaching me apologetics. They were teaching me how to defend the faith. They were teaching me how to be gospel centric in my presentation of the faith. I was getting discipled. Uh, it was full of young people that loved Jesus, which I had never been around before. It felt like this was the place to be until um, I realized or we, we came to know that our pastors were not loving the Jesus that they were teaching to us, that they were stealing from us, that they were using scriptures uh, to manipulate women into sexual practices, oh, wow. that uh, the environment of the church, what I thought was them advocating for godliness, which was actually legalism, mm -hmm. uh, to the point that, you know, if we hugged each other, it was inappropriate. If mm -hmm. we talked on the phone longer than 10 minutes without bringing up Jesus, it was an idol and idolatrous conversation. Wow. But in that space, you don't even realize that it's right. toxic. You think it's godly, you right. think it's holy. And I think after coming out of it, I was good on church. Mm -hmm. Like, I was just like, you know what? These people are <laughs> off the chain. Yeah. Like, I was I unable to see that the people that I love didn't love me back. Mm -hmm. um, and it took a long time for me to realize that church was actually something that God loved and that God created. And just because someone took advantage of me and of others doesn't mean that that's ultimately God's aim You're in right. his creation of the church. Luckily, uh, I got connected to a pastor uh, a couple years later who took me through Acts, where Paul uh, meets Lord Jesus mm -hmm. and Jesus tells him, hey, you're persecuting me, mm -hmm. which was profound because it's like God so identifies with his church mm -hmm. that in his confrontation mm -hmm. of Paul, he doesn't say, hey, you're persecuting the Damn. church. He <laughs> personalizes and says, you're persecuting me. me. Wow. And so, yeah, I think it's, it's a both and. Yeah. The church yeah. is beautiful, but the church can also hurt. Yeah. I just get so emotional like when I... Oh, it's unbelievable. I this church. And so then when Ooh. there's the abuses of power, yeah. or, yeah. oh, I just, yeah. 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 Sorry. yeah. yeah. But you're right. I mean, that's the part that is heart wrenching because I believe in my heart that our only hope as human beings is Jesus. Yes. I believe that wholeheartedly. Yes. And so when people come into a church environment looking for that hope, mm -hmm. looking for the potential for better mm -hmm. and they end up abused and that can oftentimes be like the period on the sentence of their mm -hmm. faith journey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're just like, I'm out. Yeah. That is devastating. And I mean, for me, I haven't as much experienced church hurt as I just experienced church disappointment. Mm -hmm. uh, people who I thought were more mature in the faith than I was who just were not. <laughs> and it was disappointing because you look to these people to teach you and to provide a sense of a role model for you. And you're like, wait, you're still dealing with stuff like you're in middle school mm -hmm. and I need you to be the example. So I think it's been more disappointment for me. Church hurt is so hard because uh, I believe church hurt is about broken expectations. When we come into a church setting, we assume that we're going to encounter love and compassion and grace. Um, but what we often encounter are people who are broken, people who uh, have experienced hurt themselves. And the truth is, hurt people hurt people. Um, I think that the way that we begin to um, mend church hurt is by first acknowledging that it's real and that it's happening. Um, but then two, we have to help people heal by teaching them how the Word of God can transform their lives. Um, I believe that God has come not just to set us free from sin, but to set us free from pain. Uh, and many of us are walking around because of the pain from our past. And as a result, we're voiding our purpose. Um, so church hurt, I believe, can be healed by helping people understand that the Word of God is not abstract. It can actually help you see your circumstance in a light of uh, victory as opposed to victimhood. Back in the 80s, mid 80s, we had quite a bit of stuff happen 
in the kind of the grandiose yeah. church yeah. and leaders. Yeah. And I'll never forget, Matt and I were newly married. You know, mm -hmm. I've loved God all my life. I love Jesus with all my heart. Um, my biggest prayer since I was a little girl is, God, don't ever let me embarrass you. And I know I have, but, you know, it's been my heart's desire to just always try to show His love. But I remember leaders falling and people doing stuff that you just go, oh my goodness, you know, and being so shocked. And that's kind of when it became real to me is when I thought, man, you cannot put your trust in man. Mm -hmm. yep. I can love, but I cannot put anybody in yep. the place that Jesus belongs. I cannot set anybody on a pedestal and all I can talk about what God has done yeah. for me, right. yeah. you know, on the inside of me that has changed my life and make it so personal and to where my salvation has nothing to do with anybody else except mm. what Jesus has done for me. And that's when you've heard the term, God doesn't have grandchildren. He only has mm -hmm. children, sons yes, and daughters, right. Yeah, you know, and I think that's when it kind of just became really real to me is, man, I, you cannot look for man to be your example. You have to love yeah. like yeah. Jesus would love everybody. It's an interesting thing too, like somebody who's been a pastor and leading in a church that people will come in with their hurts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. So they will have experienced hurt yeah. somewhere else and they come in and for a, a while they're looking at me yeah. through those same glasses. Waiting on you to mess right. up. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And so then as soon as my humanity reveals itself, it's like another, yeah. you know, nail in the coffin or whatever. And so I've had to learn to give people the grace to be mad for a while, the right. grace to right. be mm -hmm. hurt for a while. And to do my best to not set myself up yeah. as anything other than a follower of Jesus, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Because it's your relationship with Jesus. Yeah, That's the crux yeah. of everything. And you take that with you everywhere. And are you going to get hurt in church? Yeah, because there's messy people there. I think one thing that's interesting about church hurt is that it's very similar to parental pain. Mm -hmm. um, just because, you know, true. the church is the family. Mm -hmm. And very when true. you go into church, you have this idealism and this hope that these people will love you in the same way that your parents yeah. were supposed to mm -hmm. love you. Yeah. And so one of the things that I think made it painful is that when both pastors, when mm -hmm. they, when I found out both of them were doing what they did, it triggered my fatherlessness mm -hmm. where it felt the same. It right. was like, oh, you are similar to him yeah, in that right. you projected this right. kind of love and right. care and consistency right. that you didn't actually live or right. believe. And so right. I think that's why it hurts so bad because it's wrapped up in so much hope. Mm -hmm. You know, we have these expectations that they get pushed down and, right. you know. I can't even begin to imagine that it could impact someone's life in that way. And that's why we have to be careful as leaders. We have to take um, noteful action in how we lead people. We're not to be novices behind the pulpit and platform. We're not to be new beginners and, and new believers when we lead God's people. We have to think soberly about our role and responsibility. And so, as you are a person maybe hurting, hurt by a, a leader that has sinned against you, um, I'm, I'm sorry on behalf of all ministers and the Church of God, because that is not our atten attention or intention. Um, I pray that you, that you will find a place that you could put your roots in and thrive. I pray that the leader that you're submitting into and under and learning from will be the best example for you. And my heart goes out to Jackie that was walking through it and that season of life. And I'm so grateful that she received a healing that she needed and had the right framework to kind of download into her life in order to have a, re a healthy respect and honor for the local church. It does matter at the end. It does impact people's lives. But I, I appreciated what Jackie had to say because it helps us to contemplate where we are as leaders in the local church. How did you get past that? How did you get through that? I think one theology. Mm -hmm. I think I needed to have a right theology of the church uh, just because I went to church because I was supposed to go to church. 
Uh, but when I, I feel like when it's fickle and flimsy yeah, right. without any substance to anchor me, then it's easier for me to detach right. or to say I'm good on that. But when I saw in the scriptures the necessity of the church and how I needed the church to actually be able to love like God, I saw that it was not optional. Um, but I also became more discerning. I think people go to church, but they're not equipped to know what bad churches mm -hmm. actually look like. Yeah. So they position themselves inside of these churches, mm -hmm. not knowing that these churches ain't God's church. <laughs> the angel was not there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's not yeah. Yes, yeah. it's yeah. true. And it's because you have absolutely right. how to discern false teaching or false teachers or ungodliness. Right. What Jude even is saying in his book is, hey, there are some people in your midst right. that are yeah. going unnoticed. Let me give you the eyes to see so that you don't have to be hurt in the way that you will be heard if you stay. So I think that. I want to build on that because that's so important is I feel like part of the reason why church hurt happens and it happens repeatedly and consistently in many places is because of a lack of accountability. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that we have got to hold leaders accountable. Absolutely. And I'm speaking just in general. If, if someone is watching this and, mm -hmm. and you're on a board or uh, you in any way have any sense of influence over the leader of a church, you have to know that you are responsible for the people in that congregation. Right. Right. And you cannot just turn a blind eye like, yeah. oh, well, I don't believe that would ever happen. No, you have a responsibility mm -hmm. to investigate that. And I think that the higher responsibility is not to that leader. Mm -hmm. The higher responsibility is to the reputation of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And right now, it's, the bride. it's so it's tarnished. Absolutely. Church. People who are like, I don't go to church because look at all these pastors doing all this and, yep. and nobody's holding them accountable. It's like, look, we have to step out of ourselves. And I will tell you, this is my own belief. I think the reason why a lot of this stuff goes undealt with is because of personal insecurity. So you get put in a leadership position, you're now the overseer of this pastor, this leader, and you're like, well, I'm not gonna deal with it because I care more about my position and my proximity to the pastor mm -hmm. than I do about the health of the congregation. Mm -hmm. So that's my challenge is, and I, I say this with so much passion because I've just seen it too much, where you have people who literally say, I'm not going to church, I don't believe in God anymore because they've been hurt by the church because we're not holding leaders accountable. So growing up um, with my with my parents pastoring a church, um, I saw what my mom and dad did, no matter what time or night it was, what they did for the people that came to our church, the family that came to our church. And, um, you know, they bled for the people <laughs> um, when they got the calls during the middle of the night to come pray. My, my mom and dad were there, man. They just, they'd take us, I remember being, taken out of bed many, many times and taken over to my grandparents' house to be babysat um, so that my parents could get down to the hospital or go visit this person or go pick those people's son up that just got arrested. I mean, that happened all the time. Um, and I also saw people just leave the church just because they were offended by something. Um, and I just think that the grace in the church with the people that there could be more of <laughs> all the way around, just grace for each other. You know, nobody's perfect. We're all living this life as unto God. And um, yeah, I think pastors are amazing. And um, they, they love, it's like a shepherd going after their sheep. We have to define what church hurt is. Mm. There's the sinful nature of man that the sin has caused someone to stumble. Correct. That's church hurt that I'm talking yeah. about. But then there's hurt feelings. Yes. Right. If yeah, you're extra difference. sensitive, yeah. if um, you work on staff and you've been let go and you got your feelings hurt, right. but then you cause division in the church, mm. that's something different. Yeah, right. that's and so different. that, <laughs> I, I want to clarify. That. <laughs> because, yeah. because we have to identify, yeah. because the scripture does talk about that kind of hurt, yes. where sin has happened, yes. where abuse, that's where what we're you overstepped. About. You physically harm someone, you sexually abuse someone, which we are living in today's yep, headline. Yes. Yep, yep. There are priests, pastors, youth pastors in certain 
movements, and yet you have never addressed, mm. that's the hurt that we're talking right, about. Exactly. Not hurt feelings, not because yes. I don't like the carpet that we chose for the, for the to church. To be honest, more church hurt is that. Like people yes. Yes. You see, like I hate to inform people, but that is not church hurt. You got your feelings hurt, and, but now you're running rampant gossiping about the church mm -hmm. that you're causing harm to your own children and family, yeah. which will display and manifest yes. where your kids will no longer attend right. the church. Right. I want to help you get healed, get yeah. whole, get delivered because it will affect your family. Now yes. talking about this sinful church hurt where, you know, people in power have abused their places, um, have used their roles to either extort, mm -hmm. either manipulate, either overpower a man or a woman. Yeah. Now it's up to us when they come into our church. Right. Now we have a deliverance ministry because we have to heal that hurt. Wow. And so that is not only wrong, it's ungodly. It is unscriptural. You should not be in places of power. You should be sat down yeah. and you should go through a process of restoration. Yeah. Why? Because lives in the kingdom are That's held right. in the balance That's because right. of that. Yeah. Now, for my personal story, I, we've been harmed by mm -hmm. sinful church hurt where our leaders, he was our Paul. Yeah. We were his Timothys. Came out of the closet, divorced his wife. Mm -hmm. That's the story for them to tell five children, it affected their family. She's growing, she's blooming. She is such an essential part of the kingdom. She is healed, whole and delivered. And now she is going and preaching through that lens of that story. But we've been impacted of by that hurt. Yeah. And so my husband and I, we went through just the grassroots movement of just learning to heal, mm. learning to trust, mm. learning to build a family again, learning to not dishonor the man or yeah. the office, but to forgive yeah. and to keep believing in God's bride, his wife, his girlfriend, his fiance. He's gonna come back and consummate history with. Because Christians bear the name of Christ, it can be difficult to know or to disassociate uh, what Christians have done to me from what God has done to me. Uh, but I think we would do well to just study the person of God, the character traits of God, going through the Psalms and seeing who it is that we worship. Uh, the thing about God is that God is holy. There is no iniquity that you could attribute to him. There is no sin that he could ever be uh, judged for. He is fully holy and pure and without fault. He cannot and will never sin against you. And so because God is holy, we can always know that his dealings with us are good. And it's having that theological framework of the character and the person of God that I think allows us to see that just because a person hurt me is not the same as God hurting me, but because God is good and because God is holy, even though they might have hurt me, he is strong enough to heal me. And so I don't wanna, uh, I don't wanna cause my distrust of them to flesh itself out in how I tr uh, distrust God. We have to trust him because we have no other choice. If somebody spoke to Sean, your husband, about you, Yes. said something bad about you. Come on, Holly, I know where you're going. <laughs> right? And so to me, somebody speaks bad and evil yeah. and causes division and hurt and throws darts in the bride. Yes. Ooh, I just think you don't want to be messing with those waters. So, mm -hmm. yep, you know what? There have been the extreme hurts that we talked about, the damage done that ah, breaks my heart because it's the bride. Right? Yeah. right? It's damage done. And at the same time, there is the feelings hurt. You didn't right. get the position you want. The usher told right. you to sit there instead of there. Yeah. And so now you're <laughs> leaving the church. Yeah. Listen, it's been like that, oh, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's the silly hurt. And yeah. so now you're speaking bad about the bride. I'm just like, oof. Yeah. I wouldn't do that if I were you. I think the irony about church hurt is that in the same way that the church can hurt, most likely uh, God will use the church to heal. Right. <laughs> exactly. That, that's exactly. the ironic part about it, because I think most of my healing came through the church and therapy. So God bless therapy. Hey, and so one of the aspects that I, I, I saw this from is in, I think, 2 Corinthians. And Paul, if anybody was hurt by the church, it was yes. him. Uh, the, and Jesus. Literally. <laughs> yes. I mean, Israel yes. crucified yes. this man. But Paul says the same way in which he was comforted, he 
he comforts them. Yeah, yeah. And so in a weird way, because I received pain, I had yep. to pray for comfort. Mm -hmm. Then I was comforted by the church. Now I'm here comforting others mm -hmm. through the comfort that I received. Yep. And so it's just this kind of thing where God uses the church as a conduit of his healing. Yes. Yes. And so as we pray and say, hey, God, I need to be healed, know that he's going to send people to do it. It's just not going to be some random miraculous right. healing. And it can be, but he's often going to use a human source. That's right. And that's going to come through the church. I don't right. think you have to put down a church. Like if you're going to leave, mm -hmm. right? okay, yeah. you yeah. can leave without doing damage. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. trying to take everybody with you. Right. And, yeah. It's just right. like be grateful for what you yeah. learned, for what you experienced here, and step into something new. Yeah. And you don't have to be, and I think that's what We've seen that work causes damage is that we feel we have to have a reason or an excuse or make that bad in order to go to this. Yeah. And you don't. And just because we've had a bad hamburger right. doesn't mean that I'm right. going to talk badly about all the hamburger joints. Right, 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 right. It's just I'm not going to go to that hamburger joint. I'm going to continue going to In-N-Out where they yeah. make an amazing burger, right? <laughs> Amen. And bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. All <laughs> that is within give him Bless his holy name. Hello. <laughs> I do believe that I think hurt can also become, to your point, it become a lever for ministry yeah. because the thing that hurts us the most is not unique to us. Like right. there are so many other people who need affirmation, who need friendship, who who are struggling with things. And it's like, because we're sensitive to that, now that becomes an opportunity for God to use us to be that human that facilitates the healing. But I think rather than to your point, rather than just running out and telling everybody how horrible church is. It's mm -hmm. like, you know what, Lord, I experienced this pain. How can I turn this into purpose? Like, how can I, how can I use this in order to help other people? Because what I just experienced was not helpful at all, mm -hmm. but now I'm sensitive to this. And that sensitivity then I think becomes something that God can use. Mm -hmm. How would you encourage you know, leaders to make church a safe place? Yeah. yeah, I think you make church a safe place when God is present, you know? Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean, as a leader, you're actually loving him more than you love your leadership mm -hmm. um, and all the perks that come along with it. Um, and so being quick to repent and turn from your sin, um, having accountability around you. I think yeah. so many of the falls that we see now come because pastors are lonely. They don't mm -hmm. have anybody that they can confess mm -hmm. to. And so finding somebody that you can be honest with, I think that that would be, bring a lot of healing. And they're probably letting people know that. Yeah. Just, just even to your point. So as a pastor saying, you know, there's there's a group of people that I am submitted to and yeah. yielded to and speak yeah. in my life. And that, Absolutely. right to your that point, helps. that makes people feel safe. I'm like, oh, they have to talk to people too. That mm -hmm. helps. And I just, yeah, I think safety comes by the power of the Spirit of God. The, the, the pastors that I feel the safest with are the holiest pastors mm -hmm. that I've been around. Mm -hmm. The ones that love their wives and mm -hmm. love their children. Yeah. How a pastor behaves in his home is telling of how he behaves when it comes to the That's authority right. of his church. And so... I think there are many ways, many specific things, but just love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. If you do that, the church will be safe. We good. Yeah, yeah. we good. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta fight the tendency to believe that the way someone treated you in one church is how all churches will treat you. That's not true. And so I'll pray for you. God, I thank you for um, you. I thank you for uh, your kindness towards us in your son, Jesus Christ. And I pray for everyone who is hurting, everyone who's in hurt by the church. I pray that you would heal them. I pray that you would restore their faith uh, in your church. And I pray that you remind them that all things do work together for the good of those who love you and are called according to your purpose. Amen. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community.